gotta say, I was I was a little bit shocked when I found out that the brain behind Passion Pit is a 21 year old kid. Actually, he, he turned 22 on the day we interviewed him. His name is Michael Angelakis, and we interviewed him and the rest of the band on a veranda overlooking Times Square, right outside of the the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, the story that everybody tells about Passion Pit is that Angelakis made his first album, which was actually just a, an EP of six or seven songs, uh, by creating some songs for his girlfriend, his then girlfriend which somehow caught fire, and now he's got a major record deal and a truly excellent new album. All right, so here's my question for you. Why is the album so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Because we didn't try very hard. <laughs> we, I don't believe it. <laughs> we, no, we, we, it's when you don't try, when you just let it just come out of you as, as, as simply and, 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 and honestly as possible that you kind of end up getting the most out of yourself. I find that if you try really hard, you end up tightening up and you don't really get what you want across. I'm a fan of Jessica Juarez, who writes for Spin and Stereo Gum, and she, she described you guys as dork disco. Dork disco? <laughs> yeah, Dorks. well, she also alluded to us as poptimists, which we aren't. If we're, if we love pop music and we play pop music, but there's nothing optimistic about the they're lyrical pop content, yeah. the lyrical content <laughs> of, the, of the work at all. There's that complete juxtaposition. So that was pretty much a weird way to put it, but, you know, like, yeah, that, she also referred to us as Hannah Montana asked. <laughs> wow. Which I was like, finally, so yeah. wow. I was like, Somebody gets me. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Well, let me ask you about the, the lyrical content. I, I'm, I'm not going to try to put you on the couch too much, but w what are you singing about that's so downbeat? And we're going through growing pains. We're going through things that, or dealing with things that everyone deals with. You know, questioning, breakups. Questioning ourselves. <laughs> I never write about breakups, actually. I really? used When I was in high school, I did, but that's the, <laughs> most, it's like the most boring thing to write about. It's so predictable. I mean, th there's so much... So if you're not bummed about breaking up with somebody, what what does what are you bummed about? Like where are you going with the rest of your life? Oh yeah, I mean, I could go on and on. The point is that, in in a nutshell, really all it is is just sussing out the things that are really hard to make sense of on your own. I'm not very good at expressing myself. I would go on the limb and say most of us play music because that's how we can express ourselves. That's just what we know how to do, and this is how I can talk about it. I can't go to my friend and express myself, but I can certainly write a song about it. Right. So it's a very therapeutic record in a way. I, I, that's how I look at it. I haven't asked you about the whole making the mix, making the tape for your girlfriend thing, because I know you have to talk about it in every interview. But let me just ask: Are you still with the girl? I'm not, but she's one of my best friends, and she was at the boat show last night, and uh, we still joke about the the EP, and it's a pretty funny. It's it's funnier now that we're not together, you know. <laughs> when we were together, she was like, "You're just using me to <laughs> for, for press." I really wasn't. I didn't even think they were going to make an issue or a story out of it at all. I, we were really kind of surprised at how much that took off. But no, yeah. she's, we're still very good friends. Cool. <laughs>